Hi everyone, I'm Vanessa from the Bolinas Library. Today we're going to read a few books in honor of Black History Month. Black history is American history and hopefully we are learning and celebrating this history all year round. Some of these stories are well known and others are not. Some are based off of real life people and others are imagined. Maybe they're stories about kids going to school or spending time with their families. Let's read our first book called Me and Mama by Cosby A. Cabrera with permission from Simon and & Schuster. And this is a story about a little girl spending a day with her mom. Good morning to you, sings Mama, bright as sun. Sometimes she sings it like the birthday song. I've tiptoed to where she is in the house. It smells like cinnamon. Papa and Luca are still sleeping, but I want to be everywhere Mama is. I put my nose to the window. My breath makes a cloud inside. The clouds outside are wearing shadows. The wind is painting the outside window with beads of water. It's raining, I say. The perfect day for boots and puddles, says Mama. Bathroom first, she says, then water. This is Mama's cup. Sometimes I take a cool sip. But I have to be careful because her cup is breakable. Is there a special cup in your house that's breakable that maybe you don't get to touch or maybe you do but you have to be extra careful? This is my cup. Mama's cup goes clink clink with a spoon and my cup goes thump thump. Clink 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 thump thump clink 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 clink. Oh oops sometimes things break. This is Mama's toothbrush. This is mine. I get less toothpaste. Round my teeth with little circles, Mama says. Round my teeth with little circles, I say. It's shower and dress time. Mama holds up my towel. A shower is warm rain that gets you going. Mama and I both have silver dresses. I wear mine with silver shoes. They're my favorite. Today is not our silver dress day, Mama tells me. I put my silver dress back on the hanger and pick the plaid pants instead. Comb hair, says Mama. She points to my chair. I'm hungry, I say. Mama's thought of this ahead of time. She has warm oatmeal in the pot. This is Mama's bowl. She likes berries. And this is my bowl. I like bananas. What do you like on top of your cereal? Comb hair, Mama says again. I don't want the bumblebee barrette. I don't like the bumblebee barrette, I say. Mama closes her hand. She knows what I mean. She gives me the blue barrette. Comb hair, I say. I point to Mama's chair. Mama smiles. I give Mama the purpley pink barrette. It matches her dress. She calls it fuchsia. Out we go, I say. Max is waiting. These are my rain boots, and those are Mama's. Mama's rain boots are bigger than mine, and they're red. I watch from Max's tail before I close the door. Max doesn't wear boots. Hmm. Outside of Pecker Pecks, the sidewalk is longer than it is wide. I love the grass that grows in the in-between. It's moss, Mama says. It's velvet, I say. A hole is where branches, nests are left behind in winter. Some things don't let go. But for what? The stores are boxes filled with people. We sing out loud to sky. Sky is water taller than the trees. Mama says a song is highs and lows. Splash! Splash. The outside clouds are pink with a sleepy sun. The day and our good are done. Mama puts me and Luca to bed. Our day is done earlier than Mama and Papa's. It's just that way when you're growing. Mama reads to us. I read to Mama. I begin each story with sometimes. Mama laughs. She throws her head back and shines her teeth. I laugh too. You're my best girl, Mama whispers. Luca is already asleep. I slip through the blanket tunnel. She closes by my chin. There's the kiss. I love you, Mama, I yell. She turns off the light. My mouth gets sleepy first. The walls are dark, except by the window where the stars are hanging. I close my eyes and let the day spin some more pictures. There's Max and Luca and Papa and Mama's laugh and tree holes and tall songs and mossy velvet as green as grass and full of boxes and a blue barrette and a whole cup and a beaded window and 
warm indoor rain, oh and oh, there'll be me and Mama. The end. The author of this book wrote and illustrated this book, and she's also made many other books. She also is an art director, a clothing designer, a quilter, and is a maker of beautiful dolls that are known all over the world. She also has a daughter that she says in the back of her book follows her everywhere she goes. Is there someone special in your life that you look forward to seeing in your day or you get to have special days sometimes? Maybe it's your mom or maybe it's someone else. Maybe it's an auntie or an uncle or a grandparent or your dad or someone else in the neighborhood that you're very close with and perhaps sometimes they make you yummy food or you get to go out and take a walk together or go play outside. Who is special in your life that you look forward to seeing? In our next book, we're going to read Crown, an Ode to the Fresh Cut, written by Derek Barnes, illustrated by Gordon C. James, with permission from Bolden Books. And in this story, it's about getting a haircut, but it's also so much more. For some, getting a haircut is more than just getting a haircut. It's about seeing people and hearing their stories from different people in their neighborhood or community. And let's see what happens with this boy in this story. When it's your turn in the chair, you stand at attention and forget about who you were when you walked through that door. You came in as a lump of clay, a blank canvas, a slab of marble. But when my man is done with you, you'll want to post you up in a museum. That's my word. He'll drape you like royalty with that cape to keep the fine hairs off of your neck and your princely robes. It's amazing what a tight fade, high, low, bald, does for your confidence, Dark Caesar. Who knows, you might just smash that geography exam tomorrow and rearrange the entire principles honor roll. A fresh cut does something to your brain, right? It hooks up your intellectual. You're a star, a brilliant, blazing star, not the kind that you'll find on a sidewalk in Hollywood. Nope. They're going to have to wear shades when they look up to catch your shine. He'll lean you back in the chair, dab that cool shaving cream on your forehead, and then craft a flawless line with that razor. Slow, steady, surgical, it frames your swagger. The cute girl in the class across the way won't be able to keep her pretty eyes off of you. Her friends will giggle and whisper, girl, he's so fine. Yeah, that's what they'll say. The whole school will be seasick from the rows and rows of ripples. You'll have more waves on your head than the Atlantic Ocean. Shout out to my do-rag and patience. There's a dude to the left of you with a faux hawk. Deep part, skin fade. He looks presidential. Maybe he's the CEO of a tech company that manufactures cool. He's a boss. That's how important he looks. Dude to the right of you looks majestic. There are thousands of black angels waiting to guide and protect him as soon as he steps a foot out that door. That's how important he looks. There's a dude standing in the mirror that can't get over the masterful designs crafted on the side of his dome. Everywhere he goes, people will ask for his autograph. He looks that fresh. He looks like he owns a few acres of land on Saturn. Maybe there's a river named after him on Mars. He looks that important. There are two dudes, one with locks, the other with cornrows, and a lady with a butterscotch complexion. All they want is a shape up, tapered sides, a trim, and a crisp but subtle line. And sometimes in life, that's all you ever need, a crisp but subtle line. When your barber is done, you'll feel like a million dollars and some change when his fingers Fingertips hit you with that ha apple green alcohol or that witch hazel. It'll sting, but not like a scorpion or a hornet, more like an electric stamp of approval. And when you see the cut yourself in that ha handheld mirror, you'll smile a really big smile. 
That's the you that you love the most. That's the you that wins everything. That's the gold medal you. Every person in the shop will rise to their feet and give you a round of applause for being so fly. Not really, but they'll look like they want to. You'll see it in their eyes. It's the look your English teacher gives you when she hands you your last test with a bright red 97 slapped on it. It's how your mother looks at you before she calls you beautiful. Flowers are beautiful. Sunrises are beautiful. Being viewed in your mother's eyes as someone that matters, now that's beautiful. And he'll take it. You don't mind at all. Finally, he'll remove your cap and swipe you down with a brush made from a golden horse tail. You'll put the money in his hand without even expecting change back. Tip that man. Tip that man. It was worth it. It always is. You know why? Because you'll leave out of the shop every single time, feeling the exact same way. Magnificent, flawless, like royalty. Hello, world. The end. The author, Derek Barnes, writes in the back of his book how he used to take a bus to the barber shop when he was 11 and how fresh and confident he would feel after a haircut. He wanted to share his story to others as an important part of his growing up and all of the important men that he met and learned from in his life. These are just a couple different stories that I wanted to share with you because I appreciated their beautiful words and pictures. There are so many other stories that celebrate Black History Month and hopefully, again, these stories are something we can read and reread all year round. Stories about the past and a history that we can learn from, stories about how decisions that were made in the past still affect us today, and stories of the present, books that celebrate all the many different lives of Black and African Americans. I wish I had more with me today so I could fill up this whole library with all the books that I would like to share with you. There are stories about how our culture and country sees and judges skin color and how that affects African Americans differently than people with white skin. In the book, Solwi, a beautiful story by Lupita Nyong'o, illustrated by Vashti Harrison. It's a story about a little girl who learns how to love her beautiful dark skin. And in this story, The Skin I'm In, by Bell Hooks, she talks about how skin is just a covering and how it tells a part of our story, but not the whole story. Skin is beautiful no matter how dark or light, but it is just part of the story. Our stories go much deeper. There are stories about and written by many different African American voices throughout history and up to today that did amazing things and inspired many people. Here's a book about Harriet Tubman. Here's a book about Fannie Lou Hammer and all of her hard work during the Civil Rights Movement. Here's a story about Bessie Stringfield and how she was one of the first African-American women to travel across the country on a motorcycle. Here's a story about marvelous Cornelius, someone who helped his community during Hurricane Katrina and the aftermath. Here is a book, May Among the Stars, written by Rhoda Ahmed, about the famous astronaut May Jameson, the first African-American woman who went up in space. And in this story, it talks about how she was a little girl and she had a dream about being an astronaut. And some told her that this might be impossible. And some told her she might try and do other things, but she really wanted to be an astronaut. And so she became one. Some people get find ways to live these dreams and others are not given the opportunity. It is up to us to make sure everyone gets a fair chance at their own dream. As an artist myself, I have always been drawn to the artwork of Jean-Michel Basquiat. Here is a book about him growing up as a boy and how much he inspired others in their own life as an artist. The author, Javaka Steptoe, talks about in his life how he grew up being inspired by Jean-Michel Basquiat. Let's read this book now, Radiant Child, the story of a young artist, Jean-Michel Basquiat, with permission from Little Brown and Company, by
by Javaka Steptoe. Somewhere in Brooklyn, between hearts that thump, double dutch and hopscotch and salty mouths that slope sweet ice, a little boy dreams of being a famous artist. In a, his house, you can tell a serious artist dwells. As he sits at a table with pencils scattered everywhere, Jean Michel draws from morning until night with a serious face amid a storm of papers. He refuses to sleep until he has created a masterpiece. At night, images enchant Jean Michel's mind, and he wakes from his dreams to add one more little line. His drawings are not neat or clean, nor does he color inside the lines. They are sloppy, ugly, and sometimes weird, but somehow they are still beautiful. His art comes from his mother, Matilda, a Puerto Rican woman who designs and sews, cooks and cleans, and makes the house look like a stylish magazine. But most important, she lies on the floor and draws with Jean-Michel on his, on his father's old work papers. From her, he learns that art is not only in the poetry books she reads to him or in the theaters and museums they visit. Art is in the street games of little children, in our style and the words we speak. It is how the messy patchwork of the city creates new meaning for ordinary things. While visiting the museum, they look for, at his favorite works of art. Reading the story behind each artist, reading the story behind each work, this is how Jean-Michel learns what it means to be a famous artist. Back at home, he creates art on the floor of his, as his father, Gerard, plays jazz records. Mama Matilda cooks arroz con pollo and calls Jean-Michel, mi amor. The energy and life of the city can be felt in each line of his drawings. As time goes by, Jean-Michel learns that art has a healing power. After a car accident, he is scared and confused. Matilda gives him a book to calm his fears. It is filled with pictures of bones, skulls, and other body parts. Jean-Michel draws from it until he knows it all by heart. He is no longer afraid. Back at home, Jean-Michel's body heals, but his heart breaks. His mother's mind is not well, and, his, and the family breaks. She no longer lies on the floor and draws with Jean-Michel, but sits by the window singing only to birds. Jean-Michel is confused and filled with the terrible blues when Matilda can no longer live at home. He tries drawing the terrible out of his blues, but things are not the same. As Jean-Michel grows older, he visits his mother when he can, always bringing her artwork to show, telling her that one day it will be in a museum, when I am a famous artist. A teenager now, Jean-Michel decides, Papa, I will be very, very famous one day, with a sly look and a twinkle in his eye. Jean-Michel leaves Brooklyn for New York City, the Lower East Side, a concrete jungle where only the tough survive. During the day, dressed in a green jumpsuit splattered with paint, Jean-Michel stays with friends, sleeping on couches and floors, leaving a barrage of collages and poem-filled papers everywhere he goes. At night, Jean-Michel spray paints the walls downtown with poems and drawings that catch the eye of artists, gallery goers, and passerby. Under his art, he signs his name, Samu, instead of Jean-Michel. Everybody wants to know, who is Samu? Samu moves from street corners to art gallery walls, with powerful color composition and line, collaging and painting on everything he can, anything he can find. He, his art is still not neat or clean and definitely not inside the lines, but somehow still beautiful. With his magical charm, Jean-Michel draws a crowd, but when it's time to work, he prefers to be alone with the radio and TV on full blast. Now, in expensive suits splattered with paint, he flips through stacks of magazines and open books and paints into the night, and sometimes for days at a time, while sounds and images jump into his head. Jean-Michel, an artist among artists, never doubts one line creating from a soundtrack that is all his own. People describe him as radiant, wild, a genius child, but in his heart he is a king, so he draws crowns for himself and others he admires. A grown man now with the art world in his hands, Jean-Michel still visits his mother when he can, and at his most important shows, above all the critics, fans, and artists he admires, the place of honor is his mother's, a queen on the throne. He is now a famous artist. The end. It is important to have stories and books in our life about others that we can relate to or learn from, whether real 
or imagined, from the past or from the present. These stories can inspire us and help us with our own dreams. What is a dream that you have of doing someday? Do you like making art or helping people? Or maybe you want to fly into outer space? Hopefully some of these stories will inspire you today. And whether it's a dream of going into outer space or just living in a safe and beautiful happy home, we can all help each other too, making sure that everyone gets a fair chance at their own well, that's all for today, and I appreciate all that you are learning every day, and I hope your dreams grow and grow with every story that you read. Until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.